What's up guys and welcome back to another video. It's been a while since I released a video and many of the causes why is because uh, I have been waiting for parts and then I have been enjoying the weather in Sweden that has been last couple of weeks which has been great. So now I try to catch some motivation to start with uh, all the things I will do to the cars. So first up is the clutch upgrade to the 93 convertible. I'm going to upgrade to a vegan clutch and that clutch is specified to hold at least or at maximum 450 newton meters of torque and uh, I probably will aim for 420 or something like that so I will not do a center clutch or anything like that so I will go with basic vegan it has been proven to work and it's uh, original clutch so there will be no issues with uh, driving the car on a daily basis so that's what I'm aiming for if I would have done a full out race build I maybe have would have chosen another clutch so I will show you a little bit the parts that I have ordered so this is the parts that you want I've sourced parts from the places to get them as cheap as possible so the pressure plate is a Saks original and I bought this from eBay in Germany to get it as cheap as possible and this plate is from KL Racing in Sweden which had the best price for it and here are some seals for the gearbox that you want to change when you have it out of the way some oil this is original GM the slave cylinder is original GM and this is one part that you don't want to sheep out on because the cheaper versions of the slave cylinder often tend to fail so you want the original one and I also got some extra polyurethane bushings for the control arm and this is for the And uh, I also have some instructions if I get lost in the, in the change. And this is a tool to get the clutch in place to center it. And we also got this little tool and this is to pressurize the I can show you. This is to pressurize the brake fluid. So then you just open up the, the bleeder valve and the air bubble comes out and the slave cylinder gets filled with oil. So you don't have any issues when you try to use the clutch later. So these are the parts that you need and you will need some special tools for example this piece of wood right here I have used this two times before it's a 4x4 four four inch wood and uh, I just have moved these feet I, I have changed clutch on two car previously 195 from 2005 and the NG93 from 2009 so what I have done here is just move this in from here to here so it fits perfectly and I will place a towel right here so we don't scratch the paint or anything and uh, that is to hold up the engine so you just can lower it a little bit to make it easier to get the gearbox out 
so to start up this build it's just to remove stuff that's in the way for the gearbox so the battery has to go the delivery pipe has to go and then you will be able to access all the other stuff so let's start with removing these parts and we will see where we end up these parts out of the way I have stuffed some plastic inside the pipes so we don't get any dust or parts in there so the next step is to remove the linkage the shifter linkage and I hope you can see there's a 30 millimeter nut down there that we're going to loosen but first you need to put the gearbox into fourth gear and then you will remove a little tab that's down here so you get access to the gearbox and then I have this from Maptune but all you need is this this is five millimeters in diameter so you just need a hex wrench or uh, something that has a little bend on it so you don't drop it into the gearbox but put the gearbox into fourth then put this in loosen the 30 millimeter nut and then put the gearbox into a third and it will be loose. No, if you could see it, but the linkage is off. No problem whatsoever. So let's continue. Not every step is suitable for filming, but I will show you afterwards. So down here is the connector for the reverse signal. That needs to be removed. And the hydraulic line for the clutch. So I remove this, it's just one of these little fellows and it pops right off and I also put a little clamp on the bra on the line so not so much fluid pass by and creates a mess so now we have done everything that we can from above so now it's time to raise the car the hard part when doing this is to get everything on camera. Just like now, it's like a cooking show. I have already prepared this. I did not get it on film, but it's quite easy. Just the downpipe just sits with three bolts to the turbo. And this is usually the case. You get the whole thing out because the, the nut is stuck but it works anyway so that's out of the way 
So let's continue filming and I will switch to first person view to see if I could capture some of the action under the car easier. subframe bolts are out of the way they were a bit of pain in the ass especially these big ones with a lot of Loctite and rust on them but I succeeded with removing them so now the subframe is loose the only thing holding it up is this ball joint so we are going to try to release this nut and put on some support to support the subframe. Loosen this since I I changed the, the shocks and springs just a little while ago. So this shouldn't be a big problem. But if this won't be released, you have to unbolt the, the whole control arm. So. to get the whole subframe out with the control arms that is super nice so when I have it out I'm just going to paint it so it gets fresh and also I show you I got this polyurethane bushings these smaller bushings are to change this which is dried and cracked and probably doesn't do that much work so this will definitely be an upgrade and when I changed there was power flex bushings in the rear but not in the front and I don't know if you could see but there's a little bit of gap inside there bad lighting so these ones will definitely fill that out Keep it tight and steady so that will be an improvement as well so now we got access to the gearbox so we can drain the oil out of the gearbox and then start removing the drive shafts and then pulling out the gearbox itself this little protection shield that sits on the back side of the gearbox I have loosened this engine mount and also almost all of the bolts that holds the gearbox in place 
I have built a little support for the gearbox and the jack so you need something that holds up the gearbox or supports the gearbox because it's quite heavy and then I have lowered it down quite a bit maybe it needs to be lowered a bit more but I think this will be enough and I have secured it so now comes the tricky part there's one bolt left in the gearbox here so loosen that and then we should be able to slowly pry it out I have also removed the drive shaft from the gearbox so we will see if we could manage to get this out So we got the gearbox out, I have cleaned it off really nice and also painted it outside. I don't know how many of you that paint your gearbox and clear coat it but I think it's nice when you have it out to fresh it up. So now we're going to change the slate cylinder and to do that you need a 11 millimeter to loosen uh, this line that goes to the slave cylinder and then it just sits with three pieces of T30 Torx just loosen them up then pull it out and install the new one and then we're going to install some new seals for the gearbox that's also nice to do when you have it out because it's not every day that you do that so we're going to do these steps then we're going to change the clutch This clutch had definitely served its time. I me measured it pretty quickly and it was like approximately 5 millimeters thick and that it's very thin for a clutch and you can see it's down to the rivets. And the pressure plate you can see pretty much where it has slipped loosen the grip so this is what it should look like slotted and nice 
really thick. I think this is like 8.6 millimeters thick. And the new pressure plate. So let's install the new one. So before putting everything back together I used some brake cleaner and some scotch brite just to scuff off the flywheel so that the clutch has a, a little bit of surface to break into so it gets a good grip and all of this old dust and light rust is gone and also the pressure plate because it, it comes delivered with a little bit of uh, like grease on it so just wipe it off with some brake cleaner and then uh, it's time to install this so now I just have tightened down the bolts by hand and then you use one of these tools to get it perfectly centered. It's always a little bit tricky because of the lighting from one. And from your angle it might look crooked but I think I got it really centered there. I think I've got it. So now it's just to tighten down the bolts. So the new clutch is mounted and tightened down. And everything is prepared with the gearbox. Looks nice and shiny. So now it's just to put everything back in the reversed order. So I'm not going to film all of these parts. I'm just gonna skip to the part where we bleed the slave cylinder to get the clutch to work properly. So unfortunately guys I had to call it a day. I've tried three times I think to pick up the gearbox and put it in place and try to push it in but without success. So the last time I disassembled everything and I found out this the first times I tried to push in the gearbox it wasn't centered perfectly so the splines on the clutch has been destroyed so this explains why I couldn't get the gearbox fully in place because it it kind of slides on but then then the splines are destroyed so it couldn't get any further so I got the gearbox in and it was missing about 10 millimeters or so you you can learn from my mistake now so I'm being 100% honest and open with this so the, when you mount the gearbox there are two things you need to have in mind and one is the drive shaft that's going into the gearbox here and the other one is the axle from the gearbox into the engine or into the clutch needs to be perfectly lined up so what I did the last time was I unbolted the drive shaft so I don't have have to have that in consideration so just focus on this and even though I couldn't get it to fit and that's because I already destroyed this one so today it's Friday when I'm recording this and uh, 
I have uh, sent an email to KL Racing which I bought this from and on the site it's it stood clearly that it was going to be an OEM clutch but this is their own so I'm still waiting on an answer there that is not the issue why it didn't work I don't know if if the OEM one is different in the splines or so but some people talk very bad about KL Racing I, in my opinion they have been good so far so let's see what the answer will be but I have ordered a new one and today is Friday and uh, I didn't get a notification that my order was packed or anything so I guess it will be sent out on Monday so I will have it in the middle of next week so I can just show you this before we end this video so the there is the drive shaft put to the side so we will put in that later the one thing you can do which I got a tip from Saab Turbo Club Sweden shout out to you guys the the two holes up here one there and one there you can cut off a head stud so you cut off the the torx part of it and then grind it down and make a cut so you can use a, a screwdriver to put it in and you can use these two as guiding pins so then the the gearbox will rest on the guiding pins and you could focus a hundred percent to get it into the splines so that's what I'm going to do when I put up the gearbox again so the problem now is I have the car in the garage and I can't move anything because I don't have any clutch or gearbox in the car and I don't want to waste any time so when uh, in the next video I will start to change the, the body kit because it has been hanging around here for almost a week a little bit longer two weeks I think so the paint is fully cured this needs to be sanded down and polished you can see it's it's dusty so this will be in the next video and this is something I'm super hyped about and you can see I painted the subframe and put in these new bushings right here so everything except the clutch is ready to go on to the car so I think as soon as I receive the, the new clutch I think it would be on the road in no time so I hope you guys stay tuned to the channel and subscribe to see how this ends I'm very positive and sure this won't be a big problem and one thing you should think about when you installing the gearbox again you shouldn't use violence and exceptional force or power it should just slide in so there would be no no unnecessary violence needed so but that's pretty much who you are and human nature you want things to fit and you want it to work so you push a little more use some extra power and then shit break that, that's just the way it is and it's it's learning money as i call it so too bad it happened but it happened so just stay positive and keep pushing forward so i hope to see you in the next video when we get the body kit onto this car going to be amazing i hope so stay tuned and i will see you soon again bye